For those of you who are familiar with the Welsh landscape, you will know that the title of this talk this evening is referring to the Neolithic burial mound on Sir Vaughan, known as Barclodia de Gaures, the giantess's apronful. Barclodia de Gaures is that top red dot there on the map of northwestern Wales on the island of Anglesey, essentially on the nose of Anglesey. And uh, it's an old uh, burial chamber around 5,000 years old, in a beautiful location overlooking Carnarvon Bay. You can just see in the distance there the mountains of the Llyn Peninsula on the mainland. As a passage grave, it's most similar to the monuments that we find in the Boyne area of Ireland, actually. And some people have hypothesised that Barclod de Gaures was actually created by the same architectural tradition that gives us Bruna Boina, New Grange, for example. This, of course, is a reconstructed passage grave now. Originally, a few hundred years ago, it just looked like a big pile of stones, which is why it was referred to as the giantess's apronful. The idea being that a giantess had dropped a whole burden of stones, of large stones on the floor, when her apron gave way because the stones were too heavy. Now, interestingly enough, this bit of folklore is actually quite widespread in northwest Wales. Bar Claudia de Gaures isn't the only Bar Claudia de Gaures in northwest Wales. There's another Bar Claudia de Gaures also. This time we're going to be going to Weinvaur. Weinvaur is the dot that's on the mainland, just to the southeast of Bar Claudia de Gaures. Weinvaur is a beautiful village. I used to live in Weinvaur, actually, uh, years ago now. Beautiful village uh, in the foothills of Snowdon. It's not far to Erwydfa from Weinvaur, a matter of four or five miles. Weinvaur is an interesting place because it also, in the past, supposedly had its own Barclodia de Gaures. Now, we know this because... In the work of Mardin Vardh, the poet and blacksmith who wrote Llein Gwerin Sir Ganarvon, the folklore of Carnarvonshire that we looked at two or three weeks, maybe four weeks ago now. In his book, he records words that were originally written down by Owen Williams. In the papers of the late Owen Williams, now Owen Williams was um, an antiquarian and also someone who wrote a dictionary. In the papers of the late Owen Williams of Weinvaur, we have the following story about one of the barrows known as Barclodia de Gaures. So as well as the Neolithic passage grave on Sir Vaughan being called Barclodia de Gaures, this cairn in Weinvaur was also called Barclodia de Gaures. The most notable place of antiquity here is known as Carne de Wine. So this is another name for it now. It's not just known as Barclodia de Gaures, but also Carne de Wine, which basically means the cairn of the High Moorland, which I saw when I was 10 or 12 years old is an awfully large heap of stones of every size that a man could carry. This cairn was, I believe, approximately 500 tonnes, and the people of the Middle Ages imagined in their pseudo-history that the cairn was Barclodia de Gaures, and that she, the giantess now, had collected it into her apron in Cumdwythuch, which is further to the east, towards Arwydfa, and that she after coming over the northern side of Moil Aelia, which is the large hill that overlooks, uh, or the mountain actually, that overlooks Weinvaur, slipped, so the giantess has collected these stones into her apron, she slips so that her two heels cut two small streams. Regardless, the place is still called Gavel a Gwydan. Gwydan, of course, is another Welsh name for a witch, literally translates as the witch's lap to this day. Uh, but her intention was, said the legend, to make a bridge over Moil Don, which is where the ferry used to pass from the mainland to Anglesey. 
to make a bridge over Moila Don to Anglesey from Caernarvon. But her misfortune was the cord of her apron broke, and so she left her apron full. This cairn is on the small farm of Agarn, Wine Vaur. Now, unfortunately, this cairn no longer exists. It was obviously cleared at some point by the farmer of Agarn, wishing to sort out his pasture, perhaps for mowing. We're not sure. Now, what's interesting about what Owen tells us there is that this cairn had lots of names. It wasn't just called Bar Claudia de Gaures, the giantess's apron full. It was also called Carne the Wine, the cairn of the High Moorland. But it was also called Gavel a Wythan, or the Witch's Lap. So here, in the names of this cairn, giantesses and witches are conflated once again. They're almost seen as different names on the same supernatural monstrous being. It's also interesting that according to the folk story, this giantess or this witch was on her way to Anglesey, where the other Bar Claudia de Gaures is. And if you were to travel to San Velilog, to where the Anglesey Bar Claudia de Gaures is, you would actually have to take the ferry that the story mentions. So there was a giantess taking stones from closer to uh, Snowden, uh, further up in Erari. She collects a giantess's apron full of stones so as to build a bridge over the Menai Straits so that she can cross into Anglesey. But on her way, the cord in her apron breaks and she leaves the pile of stones far from the Menai Straits at the farm, a garden in Weinvaur. We might want to read into this folk tale a folk memory of the Neolithic stone builders. That would be tempting, but that would mean that this folk story was preserving in symbolic form a history which is 5,000 years old. So although it's tempting, it's quite unlikely that a story could survive that long. Surely that couldn't be the case. Who knows? Stranger things have happened. Let's move on to the next story. This next story is about a similar cairn, a similar pile of stones found in Manatha this time. Manatha is a village down on the Llyn Peninsula. It's the red dots right at the bottom of the image there. Manatha has its own Bar Claudia de Gaures, and this is how the story goes there. On a romantic spot in the parish of Llan Heyarn, there are old remains called Miriair Gaures, the giantess's walls. And also on the ridge of Carn Giuch is a pile of stones called Barclodia de Gaures. So we're not even in Manutha. And the author here is telling us about another Barclodia de Gaures, which is actually further to the north. But it's a bit difficult to decide exactly where the author is describing here. But anyway, we'll just park that for the time being. Interesting that the author is saying there's another Bar Claudia de Gaures. So that's three Bar Claudia de Gaures so far. The one on Anglesey, the one on Weinvaur, and this one somewhere in the middle of the Llyn Peninsula. But now there's another Bar Claudia, the fourth one as well. Because until about 70 years ago, there was a Krieg, a huge quantity of small stones, called Bar Claudia de Gaures on a small holding uh, called Tanafar, the Manatha, dropped from the apron of one of the old giantesses when one morning she happened to hear the cock crowing and had to flee while on her way to Moil Gron, where she intended to build a seat so that she could gaze at the things around her. A few interesting things there to begin with. There are many stories about giants creating seats, the story of Idris Gaur, the great giant Idris, creating his throne or seat on Cadridris, which we'll talk about uh, in a later session. But this is part of the folklore of giants and giantesses, that they create these seats for themselves in the landscape so they can observe their surroundings. Almost certainly almost to observe the stars. We'll touch more on that in another session, but for the time being it's worth noting that this is part of the folklore of giants. Also, here now we have four 
barcodiad a gaureses. We've got one on Anglesey, where the Neolithic uh, passage grave is. We've got one in Weinvaur, on the farm of a garn, which has disappeared now. We've got another one, which is somewhere on a mountain ridge in the Llyn Peninsula, and another one in Manatha. So that's four Barclodiad Gaureses now. That's a lot of cairns bearing this name, the giantess's apronful. So it's obviously a really popular part of Welsh folklore in the early modern period to see what were normally Neolithic burial mounds, or at least very early Bronze Age mounds, being called these apronfuls of giantesses, or something that came from the lap of the witch. There is, of course, something slightly uh, symbolic about this. An apron full of stones could also be described as the giantess being pregnant with this womb burden of stones. Yeah, It will be carried in the same way. An apron full is carried over the belly. So this could be seen in some ways as a symbolic womb burden. The giantess is somehow giving birth to these stones. And that's hinted at also in this idea of the witch's lap, that this is something that came from the witch's lap, yeah, that other name for uh, the cairn in Weinvaur. There is another Barclodia de Gaures, you'll be glad to hear. This time in a place called Treir Cairi. Treir Cairi is in the middle there. It's on the northern side, on the northern coast of the Llyn Peninsula, overlooking the Bay of Carnarvon. If we go back to that image of Barclodi de Gaures on Sir Vaughan, on Anglesey, that line of, of mountains you can see in the distance, the furthest hill on the left is the beginning of the range where Treir Cairi is. So all of these places are visible from each other. Treir Cairi can be seen from Barclodi de Gaures and Anglesey. And I think Treir Cairi can also be seen from Weinvaur, but Manutha can't be seen by any of them because Manutha is a bit lower down. But anyway, there we go. Treir Cairi is Welsh for the town of giants. Now Treir Cairi is an Iron Age village that's up on top of the the hill uh, overlooking the Bay of Carnarvon. You can see there lots of little hut circles and one main protective wall, defensive wall. This is an artist's impression of what it would have looked like. There is obviously one large cairn that you can see on top of the hill that's encompassed by the village. But Treir Cairi uh, is an amazing place. If you ever get an opportunity to go, I heartily encourage you to do so because it's full of these these hut circles and these different passages in between the hut circles. Fascinating place. Now, there is some folklore about Treir Cairi that goes something like this. Once again, from uh, Marthin Var, this collection of Welsh folklore from the Carnarvonshire area. In the old times... Long, long ago, it so happened that some of the people of the parish of Llanail Hellarn, which is the village just below Treir Cairi, offended one of the giantesses of Treir Cairi, the giant's town. And in revenge, she collected an apron full of stones that she intended to heat in the sulphurous fire of the phantoms, or the ellill is what we call phantoms in Welsh who lived at that time on the ridge of the mountain. So this is very interesting. The giantess is not just going to throw stones, but she's going to heat them up in the infernal fire of the phantoms, of the ellill, who live uh, on the same mountain as her. And then the giantess was going to throw the stones white hot into the fields that were ready for reaping. So... Her revenge is to throw white hot stones through the air for many miles until they crash into fields that are ready for reaping to take revenge on the farmers and the parishioners of Llanel Now 
Now that's interesting because what we might have here is a fossil. Of course, I'm guessing here, there's no way of proving this, but this reads like the type of story you would hear about a wild spirit, or maybe even the fossilised remains of a goddess. Now, I say the fossilised remains, I don't mean actual remains, I mean the fossilised remains of an ancient goddess preserved in the strata of Welsh culture. So this is a cultural preservation, not a preservation in the ground, yeah? But I think the metaphor bears out. This could be a fossilised version of an ancient goddess who was responsible for the abundance and fruitfulness of the land in this place, who needed appeasing if the harvest was to be successful. That's what it sounds like to me that this giantess here, who's going to be throwing these stones uh, to ruin the harvest, is perhaps an ancient goddess who needed appeasing by sacrifice or devotional worship or whatever it is, but the relationship needed to be made right if the locals were to have a successful harvest. I'm not claiming that that's proof that the whole notion of a giantess is incredibly ancient and goes all the way back to the Iron Age, perhaps even the Neolithic era. I'm not claiming that. But it is the type of story that I would use to build that type of argument should there be other evidence at hand to back it up. But it's interesting at least, well, just to finish off the story there, there's a little bit more. So she's about to throw the stones, but as she was taking the stones to Moel Carnorach, which literally means Witch Cairn Hill. So again, we have a giantess conflated with a witch, essentially the same monstrous character. While the witch giantess was taking the stones to be heated up in the infernal flames of the Ellis, a dignified knight came to meet her. And she dropped the stones to the ground, and they are still there, and are called to this day Barclodiad Agaures. Now, I'm not sure if that makes it five Barclodiad Agaures, or if this is the same as the one that's mentioned in the story about Manutha, about there being one further to the north. Regardless, that's at least four cairns, one on Sirvon, on Anglesey, one in Weinvaur, one at Trierkeiri, and one in Manatha. Four cairns called the Giantess's Apronful. And two of those cairns, the one in Weinvaur and the one in Trierkeiri, also being associated with a witch. I think that I can make the case quite convincingly in that case that there is a really strong relationship between uh, the figure of the Welsh witch and the figure of the Welsh giantess.